Welcome to the Manga Bay Newscast. It's October 14th, 2020, and I'm your host, Mike Gorecki, bringing you the news and inspiration from Nature's Front Line. Today we take a look at efforts to protect the Cross River Gorilla, one of the world's rarest great ape species, by addressing the attitudes and knowledge gaps that lead to the human behaviors threatening the gorilla's survival. We're joined on the program today by Hilary Chukwu Ameka host of a radio program called My Gorilla, My Community that reaches as many as 4 million listeners and encourages them to become active participants in conservation. Chuku Ameka talks about why his radio program is an effective means of community engagement and the impacts he's seen from time spent in local communities on the front lines of conservation. We also speak with Inayam Imong, program director for the Cross River Landscape with Wildlife Conservation Society Nigeria and a member of the IUCN Primate Specialist Group. Imong discusses the major threats to crossover gorillas, the main barriers to conserving the gorillas, and why community-based conservation measures are so important in this context. The crossover landscape has some of the highest human population densities in Africa, and with such high human density, you have no choice than to work very closely with the communities that live adjacent to gorilla habitat. The Cross River Gorilla is a subspecies of the Western Gorilla, and it's believed that there are just around 300 individuals remaining in the wild, which is why it's known as one of the world's rarest great ape species. The gorillas can only be found in the remote highland forests of the Nigeria-Cameroon border. There are both federal and state laws in Nigeria that aim to protect great apes, but enforcement of those laws is lacking. And as the human population grows, cross-river gorillas have come under increasing pressure. Human activities like the conversion of the gorilla's forest habitat to farmland Commercial logging and the building of new roads drive habitat loss and fragmentation. The bushmeat trade is another notable threat to the gorilla's survival. And thanks to the new roads the government is building to connect remote areas of the country, even the most secluded forests are no longer safe havens for the great apes. But as much as hunters from local communities pose a significant threat to the Cross River Gorilla, they are also potentially powerful allies of conservation. Hilary Chuku Ameka is Cross River Gorilla Campaign Manager for WCS Nigeria, in addition to host of the radio program My Gorilla My Community, which features a variety of segments that aim to entertain and educate listeners about forest and wildlife conservation, especially conservation of Cross River Gorillas. Chuku Ameka says the goal of the radio show is to change attitudes and behaviors and encourage local communities to adopt alternative livelihoods that do less harm to forests and the species like gorillas that call the forest home. WCS Nigerian program are doing a whole lot of interventions in trying to conserve the, the pristine forest of Cross River State, Nigeria, and uh, the wildlife community that uh, inhabit the, 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 you know, those forest areas. So, so one, of, one of what they do is research, basically, and then they also do law enforcement, like patrolling the forest to make sure that illegal activities do not happen there. But then in addition to all of that, is this co- communication component where I, I, I come in. The, the communication component of the WCS Nigeria intervention is, uh, I, I would say, is multifaceted in, in a way that uh, there are so many, so many angles to it. So one of the angles to it happens to be this radio program. Um, and aside the radio program, there's also direct communication approach to the community itself, where we take advocacies to the community members. But let me let me uh, uh, let me start with the radio program itself. So uh, we have a radio drama, uh, a radio drama running. We call the radio drama Linda's Joint. Linda happens to be the lead character in the radio drama. Is a 15-minute uh, drama that we normally produce separately, and then it forms a component, a major component in the bigger one-hour pro, uh, program, one-hour radio magazine program. So the design is this way. The radio magazine program itself is called My Gorilla, My Community. So the design is uh, such that the magazine has different components, so it has The drama segment, like I said, which is a major part of it. And then it has interview segment. It has a a segment we call facts and figures. It has the feedback segment and it has musical segment. So those are the, the, you know, the major segments in in the radio magazine program. Um, So what we do with the radio drama is to 
you know, roping those important messages about conservation, about forest protection, about environmental sustainability that we want our listeners to imbibe. So we rope that in while crafting the radio drama so that um, when you listen to it, you, you know, you, you are able to understand why you are asked to not do certain things and why you are asked to do certain things. And therefore, you are able to make an informed decision on what you have to do or what you don't have to do in order to keep the forest safe. Chuku Emeka says that the 15-minute serial drama, Linda's Joint, which opens every episode of My Gorilla, My Community, is one of the most important segments. The drama involves titular character Linda, a single mother who lives in a rural village along the Nigeria-Cameroon border, as she goes about managing the business of her eatery, the joint referred to in the title. The drama employs local dialects together with English and Pidgin, and incorporates local music while referencing local festivals, customs, and practices, all the better to engage listeners. Chukwu Meko was kind enough to provide us with a sample to listen to. My Gorilla, My Community presents Linda's Joint, a radio serial on gorilla and environmental protection. I hope there is no problem, Madam Magnus. Oh yes, there is, Chief. And that is why I came. The rangers have been bringing reports of increased timber logging. Really? Yes. The reports for the past two weeks have been worrisome, and I fear it may get worse if we don't do something about it, and fast too. This is not sounding good. And I know those loggers are coming from other communities. <laughs> Chief, how can you be sure of that? Don't bother people also log. Of course we log. But we only log in our community forest, and we also have bylaws. Laws against logging in the protected areas. I am sorry to say this, but some border indigents may still know something about this indiscriminate logging activities going on. You think so? Yes, I think so. My Gorilla, My Community is broadcast to a number of communities that live near important habitat for Cross River Gorillas, such as Cross River National Park, the Mbe Mountains, and Afi Mountain Wildlife Sanctuary. And it is now in its fifth season. We run in seasons, and each season has 26 episodes of the radio drama. And um, for each season, there is a thematic focus, or rather, there are sets of a thematic focus, you know, uh, conservation themes that we want to explore for each season. So, for example, we, we set a drama in a local community, of course, the, the Cross River Gorilla that we try to conserve from this end occur in Nigeria and along the borders of Nigeria and southwest Cameroon. And so um, we, we created an imaginary community we call border community border, you know, to, to sound like the border of Nigeria and Cameroon. So we call the, the, our dramatic community border community. And this is a community where we have a whole lot of um, forest dependents. We have hunters, we have farmers, we have people who do all kinds of things with the forest in order to survive. So when we create our drama, we reflect the lives of these kind of persons and uh, how they how they struggle with their everyday existence near the forest or inside of the forest so for example if we create a team, if we create a scene uh, uh, or a plot to say the gorillas are depreciating in population because hunters are hunting them excessively we could create a, a you know a, a dramatic situation where a hunter or rather where hunters are assembled by forest authorities to say look what you guys are doing is detrimental not just to the environment but to the cross river gorillas and there are other ways you can survive not necessarily doing hunting all right and then we have the hunters argue their own sides of uh, they, you know, table their own sides of the argument. Normally they tell you this is what they have been doing all their entire life. Their, their, their fathers, their forefathers were hunters handed over the trade to their fathers and now down to them. And, you know, you are coming to tell them to stop hunting. 
you know so <laughs> those kind of dramatic situations are what we create so at the end of it all we are able to pass a message to say um even if you must hunt please know that there are certain animals like the forest elephants like the cross river gorillas you know like the chimpanzees like the bonobos like the orangutans all, all you know all classes of apes um that these animals are endangered species and um, they are protected by law all right so when we pass that kind of message and the listeners get to hear them you you know they, 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 they begins to change their attitude and behavior towards the forest towards the wildlife community in the forest in a number of key communities wcs has organized listening groups from whom chukwameka and the rest of the my gorilla my community team solicit feedback about the program we have basically nine targeted communities these are communities that are very close to the protected area of the forest some of them are enclave communities which means they actually live right inside of the forest and surrounded by those protected areas so when you live in an enclave in a forest enclave community uh chances are high that your your actions and inactions affect the the animals uh the forest itself and then the animals that live in them so in these communities uh in these in those nine local communities that we target majorly we have set up listening groups um made up of 10 to 12 persons made up of young people made up of women made up of men you know who are who 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 we have empowered with small radio sets so they can listen so we gave we gave we gave them radio sets and then we provided them with batteries that's also because uh these enclave communities these are local communities most of them do not even have access to public power supply which was basically why we even opted for the radio medium to be able to do this because we know that with with um with batteries very cheap batteries and uh, some small radio sets people can have access to listen to the program so we set up these uh, listening cells and then we gave them radio sets and then we we set them up give them a leader so they can gather in the in the shop most of their leaders are shop little shop owners or or village chiefs you know so they just gather in the compound in the in the space of that leader uh on the days of the broadcast of the program and then they listen through and then they get us feedbacks chukuameka and wcs don't just talk at their listeners through the radio program they also spend a good amount of time listening to community members in order to ensure that the radio show speaks to their experiences and needs during the initial design phase of the radio project what we did was actually visit some of these communities to hear their traditional music and band play all right we figured out that if we use if if we incorporate that in our program in, in our in our radio programming it's going to go a long way um making them identify easily with the pro, uh, you know with the program and it works so for example our theme music was uh, done by a, a group of uh, dancers a group of uh, singers from one of the local communities and we are still using that up until now and um also for each season of the drama we do our um, content research by going down to some of the communities to find out first hand what their conservation issues are where they agree and where they disagree with conservation so we you know they tell of these stories first hand and then we we record them and then we make drama out of them that way when you know when we are making the drama to have stories they can easily identify with it also helps us a lot in in reaching out to them so they listen to this and they are like yeah this is what obtains in our very community when you speak with the communities do you find that their attitudes and behaviors are changing because of the radio program Yes, but initially it wasn't easy. Um so so in those early days when I joined in 2015, um even up to the early part of 2016, there are communities you visit and they don't you are not even welcome. You just you, <laughs> you, just, you just see you just see it um from from the word go that you are not even welcome. All right? Uh they they they, they become so cantankerous and you know just very toxic and just want, want wanting you to leave. but with our persistence and um 
you know, uh, you know our, our perseverance and uh, you know, basically just using their, their, their gatekeepers, approaching their, their leadership first of all, uh, we are able to break into those communities and over time they started listening to us. And over time, since they started listening to us, their attitude and behavior generally are beginning to change. Um, let me also say that uh, since our intervention, many of the communities are beginning to even come out to form conservation groups. You know, co conservation groups in, in you know in, in in the in the nature of um, communities coming together to form a conservation association and you know support what we are doing support what the forest rangers are doing in protecting the forest through giving information through helping to do patrol i mean it's their forest so they know the nukes and crannies and it has been very fruitful uh let me also say that um just before the covid 19 lockdown we were able to complete a post broadcast survey and then again let me track back to remind us that um when, the, when we started initially, before 2015, around 2014, there was a baseline survey where we, uh, where WC, that was even before I joined. So they did a baseline survey to figure out um, where the communities are with conservation, with knowledge about conservation. So after like uh, five years, uh, like I said, just before the lockdown, we repeated that survey in order to find out what, ha what has changed. The report of that, the official report of that is, is uh, being put together right now. And, uh, but the indications are, are bright enough to let us know that there's a, a whole lot of difference between the data we got from the baseline and that which we are going to get eventually when we, when we complete the data analysis. So it, it, it's, it's a progress. It's something, it's something to cheer about. Hunting by local community members is one of the biggest threats to Cross River gorillas. Poverty and unemployment is a big reason for that, Chukwameka told me. Even those community members who go to university often end up coming back to their villages to farm cocoa or hunt because there are no other jobs available. Inayam Imong, a senior colleague of Chukwameka's at WCS Nigeria, expands on the main threats the gorillas are facing. The main threats are habitat loss and poaching. These have been the main threats. Uh, gorillas are unfortunately haunted and their habitat is, is destroyed by farming, uh, mostly for subsistence agriculture, uh, but also increasingly in some parts of the range of these gorillas by commercial plantations. So hunting and habitat loss are the main threats, but also is infrastructure development, especially roads. Uh, construction of roads through cross river gorilla habitat is an increasing threat. Uh, we have an example in cross river state in Nigeria uh, where the government proposed to construct a highway uh, through core gorilla habitat. Uh, fortunately, uh, a campaign was launched against this and the idea has been dropped, at least for now. So those are the main uh, threats. The other threat is expanding um, local communities, including communities inside protected areas such as the Cross River National Park. In the northern sector of the Cross River National Park where gorillas occur, there are three enclave communities uh, which continue to grow and their expansion uh, threatens connectivity between two small gorilla populations uh, within the park. These are the main threats to Cross River gorillas. Manga Bay has reported on the highway project in Nigeria's Cross River state that would have cut through farmland and forests that are home to Cross River gorillas, but it was actually news to me that the project has been called off. At least for now, yes. And I think uh, mainly due to lack of funds, uh, there was a lot of uh, publicity generated around uh, the proposed uh, superhighway, it's called, it's a superhighway, a six-lane superhighway uh, the government of Cross River State proposed to build. And as a result of the publicity that was generated against this uh, proposed superhighway, uh, we think uh, potential investors, um, mostly uh, 
from China, we think, uh, may have become a bit a bit um, unsure about making such investments. So the, the government doesn't have doesn't seem to have the funds to move forward with, with that uh, project. Building awareness of conservation issues in local communities via the radio program My Gorilla My Community is just one of several conservation initiatives aimed at protecting Cross River gorillas. The main focus of WCS in Nigeria and in Cameroon, um, um, at least in southwestern part of Cameroon, is uh, conservation of the Cross River gorilla, mainly improving protected area management. Uh, that is the core of what we do, um, supporting protected area authorities to better manage uh, these key areas for gorillas, uh, support for improved law enforcement and law enforcement monitoring. Um, we have a very uh, broad education program that started off as a school-based program that has expanded over the years to include use of films, wildlife films, and also radio. Um, we implement a program called My Gorilla, My Community, which is a radio program that includes a drama uh, series um, and also an interview segment on that program that allows uh, stakeholders to interact and identify threats and problems, but also importantly to jointly find solutions to these uh, uh, threats to cross river gorillas. Um, the other intervention is working with local communities, building uh, their capacity to uh, adopt alternative, more sustainable um, livelihoods um, that take the pressure away from the forest. For example, providing training to ex-hunters in activities such as uh, beekeeping, uh, but also improved uh, sustainable cocoa production. Cocoa is a main cash crop in the region, and WCS is working with cocoa farmers to provide them with the tools and knowledge that they need to produce cocoa sustainably. Um, these are some of the, the key projects that we're implementing. Uh, the other thing is improving transboundary conservation. Uh, the landscape occupied by crossbar growers is transboundary in nature. Uh, covering the southeastern part of Nigeria and southwestern part of Cameroon. And as, as you know, the gorillas don't know where the boundary is. Uh, therefore, it makes sense for efforts across the border to be coordinated. Uh, that is what we are working on, including efforts to uh, have the area designated as a World Heritage Site. Um, these are some of the key uh, interventions that we are implementing in the region. How important is your work with local communities to overall conservation efforts? Working with uh, local communities, uh, it's critical actually, uh, because the, the cross river landscape incidentally has some of the highest human population densities in Africa. And with such high human density, you have no choice than to work very closely with the communities that live adjacent to gorilla habitat. And we have evidence that this can work uh, in favor of conservation. We have a project here in Nigeria in at a site called the Mbe Mountains, which is in between the other two cross river gorilla sites in Nigeria, the Afi Mountain Wildlife Sanctuary and the Cross River uh, National Park. This area of forest, the Mbe Mountains, is owned by communities. At least communities have traditional uh, rights over the land. And WCS has for many years now worked with those communities, making sure they are more involved in making decisions and implementing activities that support uh, the protection of cross river gorillas. And we see really encouraging results compared to um, neighboring sites. We see that illegal activities even less in the Mbe Mountains, and we see even more wildlife in this community forest, which shows that if you effectively engage local communities, you could have uh, really good uh, results. Uh, through the education program that we're implementing, we are already seeing uh, some positive signs of attitudes changing in favor of conservation and as well as uh, behaviors. 
we see people now believe more that than gorillas um, have to be protected, their habitat have to be protected. Uh, these are positive signs. We recently, uh, in 2017, had a situation where a lone young gorilla moved out of their Fee Mountain Wildlife Sanctuary and wandered off several kilometers and spent a number of days around two communities. The leadership of those communities came together and informed the protected area authorities and made sure that the communities didn't hunt down this gorilla. This wouldn't have happened uh, several years ago. Uh, this is an indication that uh, attitudes uh, towards uh, gorillas and conservation in general are improving. How much of the success of gorilla conservation relies on protected areas? And how much does the success of protected areas rely on law enforcement versus community-based conservation? Uh, protected areas are really uh, key to the long-term survival of crossover gorillas as any other species in this uh, region. Uh, but having said that, I would, uh, I would um, strongly support uh, doing both, um, improving protected area management, but also actively promoting and encouraging uh, community-based conservation. Uh, uh, encouraging uh, local communities to support conservation because uh, even though most of the remaining uh, gorilla habitat is found within protected areas, there are still uh, some areas outside protected areas with no formal protection at all. And if uh, the communities would not support the conservation of those areas, then the long-term um, survival of the gorillas is threatened. Also, even um, for the protected areas, communities surround them. And it's important to have the support of these communities uh, for effective law enforcement. You can't enforce laws effectively when you do not have the support of surrounding communities. So I think improving law enforcement within protected areas is important, but also working with the local communities um, making sure they support the efforts uh, you're making through law enforcement um, are successful. Imong says that funding for conservation of Cross River gorillas is provided by numerous international parties, from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the EU to the Arcus Foundation, the Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, the Whitley Fund for Nature, the Darwin Initiative, and the Rainforest Trust. But lack of adequate funding is still among the major barriers to advancing conservation of the great apes. Funding is a, it's a major challenge. We could be doing a lot more than we are able to do currently if we had uh, more funding. Uh, we need significantly more funding to take our efforts, to scale up our efforts. But beyond funding, it's the problem of increasing, rapidly increasing human population, um, which is why educating the, the local population is so important. Uh, if you have a fast growing population, it's important that that population understands the value of conservation so that you don't stop them from destroying habitat and killing animals uh, just by law enforcement alone, but um, do ensuring that because they do have a better understanding of the value of biodiversity. Um, so yes, funding is an issue, but there are other issues. The issue of lack of alternatives. Uh, most of the communities have for, for very long depended heavily on the forest for their livelihoods. Uh, when people have to change their ways from hunting, from um, slash and burn agriculture, they need to find alternative, more sustainable ways to, to um, feed their families. And this is an area that WCS has continued to pay more and more attention to. How closely are the gorillas themselves being monitored? And do we have any idea what their population trends are like? Are they increasing? Are they decreasing? At all three sites, uh, three crossover gorilla sites in Nigeria, we have teams uh, WCS has teams going out every day doing law enforcement patrols that also collect data on uh, wildlife abundance and distribution while recording uh, human activities. Over the years, we've used uh, the data collected by these ranger patrols in addition to uh, focused wildlife surveys to, to try to estimate the population of, of the gorillas. 
at the moment our best estimate is that the gorillas crossover gorillas uh, number about 300 uh, across their range in nigeria and cameroon in nigeria we estimate about 100 gorillas survive we feel that the population is at least stable if not growing um, and the reason for this is that we see we continue to see signs of recruitment in the population for example we recently captured images at one of the sites the Mbe mountains which included young individuals in a group it was the first time we had images of a, of a relatively large group with a number of young in the group which is um, a clear indication that the population is successfully reproducing so we feel quite confident that the population is stable is not in decline but possibly uh, even expanding in 2017 2018 we conducted a survey to collect dung samples for genetic analysis those samples are currently being analyzed at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology to give us a better sense of the of the population. Uh, but we hope that when the re results are out, it will, they will indicate that the population is growing and not in decline. What are some of the biggest changes you'd like to see in order to safeguard the future of Cross River Gorillas? I think a really important thing is change in attitudes. I would like to see a positive change in attitudes of the of the people living next to gorillas, but also of um, policymakers. Interestingly, um, you you still find a number of key key stakeholders, including government officials, who are in a position to make policies that affect gorilla conservation, who are not aware of the conservation status of these animals, uh, therefore may make decisions and policies that negatively impact on the gorillas and their habitat. A clear example is the superhighway, which I, I, I described. I'm hoping there's a positive change in attitudes, but also improved uh, protected area management. Even though uh, we have areas declared as protected areas, uh, their management is not always good enough. I'm hoping that the management of these areas will continue to improve uh, for the survival of the cross river gorillas. Uh, in terms of awareness, even internationally, I think increased interest, um, even internationally, will benefit the cross river gorillas. For example, if there will be support for the, the, the cross river gorilla landscape to be designated as a World Heritage Site, that might bring increased interest and hopefully increased funding to safeguard the gorillas. If you enjoy the Mangabe Newscast, we ask that you please help spread the word by telling a friend. That's the best way to help expand our reach and keep the show growing. Another way to help is by becoming a monthly sponsor via our Patreon page at patreon.com slash mangabe. We are a nonprofit news outlet, so just a dollar or more per month will really help us offset production costs and hosting fees. Supporters at the $10 a month level also get access to our members-only insider content. So if you're a fan of our audio reports from Nature's Frontline, please head to patreon.com slash mangabay to learn more and support the Mangabay newscast. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash mangabay. You and your friend can subscribe to the Mangabay newscast on Android, the Google Podcasts app, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Or you can download our new app for Apple and Android devices. Just search either app store for the Mangabay Newscast app to gain fingertip access to new shows and all of our previous episodes. And of course, you can read all of our news and inspiration from Nature's Frontline at mangabay.com. Or if you prefer to keep up with us on social media, follow us at facebook.com slash mangabay or on Twitter and Instagram. Our handle is at mangabay on both of those platforms. Thanks as always for listening to the Manga Bay Newscast. I'm your host, Mike Recchi, signing off. Talk to you again in two weeks.